Hi, I'm Martin Jenkins, Project Manager at UKFT, and I'm here today with Fran Dodson, Sales Director at Martin Mills, as part of the UKFT's British Textile Week, which is in association with the Cloth Workers Company and the Campaign for Wool. I'm pleased to be with Fran today, and we're going to discuss your highly successful textile manufacturing business up in the north of England. Fran, welcome. Thank you very much for your time today. Uh, we'd love to hear from you about the wonderful things of of Martin Mills and how the textile sector has been for you over the years and your role within the company. So over to you to tell all our audience about Martin Mills. Thank you very much for that, um, Martin. Um, well, Martin Mills started and was founded really in 1931. And we were predominantly basically a double jersey knitwear company. And our chairman, which is uh, Mr. Duncan Watts, he then took the business on and forward. Um, 40 years after, and then we started producing fabric. Predominantly, really, when we first started, it was for schoolwear, the schoolwear sector, the private schoolwear sector. And we started with just six looms down in Tongpa Business Centre down in Bailden. And um, from there, we then moved to Pool in Wharfdale back in 1996. Um, We've been here ever since. We now have 20 looms, producing a roughly around 25,000 meters a week. We work five days a week, 24 hours a day. Um, and we own very large amounts of stock, both in finished fabric and also in yarn as well. Um, we produce basically from 100% wool blends to polyester viscose to polyester wools. Um, polyester cottons, 100% cottons, 100% polyester as well. Um, there is no minimum order for any fabric that we produce on our stock holdings as well, our stock offerings, should I say. Um, and for myself, I've been here roughly around 22 years with Martin Mills, working alongside Duncan and his daughter, who's a managing director, which is um, Laura Watts. Fantastic. Thank you very much. I had no idea how big the schoolware trade was. So that sounds like a fairly substantial amount of blazers and, uh, and what have you for the school industries. It is. It's 55% of our business. Wow. Now it's 55% of our business. I would have said it was greater when we were smaller. It would probably have been about maybe 75 to 80% of our business when we were a lot smaller. Um, we grew the company from back, um, I would say, probably 2015 and then we went into different sectors like into basically the military to MOD we went into um, we went then into the high street stores to see if we could start producing some of the fabrics for the high street stores and what they're selling today this. yeah wow wonderful business and always based in West Yorkshire based in West Yorkshire we've always been based in West Yorkshire um, we're very proud to be British manufacturers of fabric. We have, we, we, we're partners in a dyeing and finishing company in Keyflip, which is Robert's Dyes and Finishers. Yep. Uh, and we've had them now probably around about 15 years as well. Um, so it's a very good chain really to show our customers that we have control as well, not only on the weaving side, but we also have control on the dyeing and finishing side as well. Fantastic. And how much of the business is exported? Is there an international market for the Martin Mills product as well? The years. This is, we, this is one that we tried to push um, greatly, I would probably say, over the last three years. We, I've been dealing to the, like, the Maltese market in Australia as well, right. probably for the last 10 years. But the markets we were predominantly trying to get into recently, I would say, is like into Korea to Japan um, but I think these markets are quite difficult and there's a lot of our competitors already there yeah. you know, so it's getting our name into that market basically sure sure wow and I imagine very much for, for that type of, of product that you that you sell into the school um, environment design is a very key feature so, so you very have a fairly sizable design team we do it's very key because basically um, Every school want their own identity as it comes into a uniform. I know that um, a lot of people will see a lot 
a lot of school children in very clear plain cut blazers and, and very bog standard colours but obviously whether it's trousers or whether it's skirts and tunics a lot of this goes into different times as well and so they, they interpret they put their own colours their school colours into this yeah. and this is where our design team come in very strongly because that's when we can produce cats that we can produce samples which would go into samples to be making into sample garments mm. and then our customers from there will then you know project will basically uh, they would do a presentation to the school to how this is how your children and your pupils basically can look going forward and i think it's a very strong identity for a school very yeah, strong yeah. So how many looms are in place now? Obviously, you, you, you weave on site, you finish over at your partner organisation. So how big's the weaving operation for you? We're doing, we have 20 looms in total. Fantastic. We have 20 looms. And um, we, we, what we try to do is we try to replace looms when they get to a certain age, basically, as you might say. And um, the last investment we had which was with uh, Dornier so we put some more Dornier looms in <coughs> and um, but we always strive to invest you know to update the, the machinery as, as much as we possibly can to be honest. Yeah. Our next investment I think we're looking at is a walking machine. Right super and that's the key thing with textile manufacturing businesses that we find as we've been doing these interviews you know the tradition is very much important the the now and the current situation is very challenging, but the future for innovation and skills and development continues to be really high intensity. I guess that's the same for Martin Mills. It is. It is. I think you, you, you've always got to, I know that um, you will always have your customers that will always go back to the basics and buy what they've always traditionally bought which has always seemed to be, be the key, especially in my position when I've been out selling to different people across different markets. But I think you've got to show customers that you can do things differently. You can tweak stuff, you can change it, whether it's color, whether it's design, and whether it's composition in fabric as well, because a lot of people, yes, they like the wool, but they might like a little bit of twist on that to put a little bit of cashmere in there. You know, so it's, you've got to be, be seen to be in the yeah. basically to, on the design side as well. Super. And a very proactive approach to it, no doubt. You know, when you're making design changes with schools, it needs to be very much a proactive partnership with the school. Definitely so. And, you know, I think because we're not dealing directly with the school, we're getting basically the information is coming, relating back to us from our customer on what they're wanting. And before you get it right, you could go through 25 CAD designs before, <laughs> you, and then that's before you even produce a sample. You know, so, you know, because these people, I don't think, sometimes see what goes into producing a bit of fabric, you know. Wow, super. So I'm going to ask you one very final question, which we've asked everybody in the series of interviews. And it's a key question around British textiles and what British textiles means to you, Fran. Well, I think I'm very proud to be a British manufacturer, to be honest with you. I think that's one thing that I have to start with first, is that I'm proud that whatever we produce, we produce here, and that we can control it. But also, I think some of the key aspects, as well as being a British manufacturer, is that it's quality, service, and not forgetting the workforce, because without these guys and the skill sets that they have, we wouldn't be able to produce what we produce today. I think that's a very, very clear message and certainly something we've heard from others around how important British manufacturing is. Fran, thank you so much for your time today. It's been enlightening listening to the story and, and certainly about the history of Martin Mills. Uh, any of our viewers and listeners and, and followers on our social media can see more of Martin Mills via the UKFT website. So if you head to www.ukft.org and follow the British textile week hashtag on our social media where you'll see more interviews trends and tales from the industry fran thank you so much for your time today and no doubt we'll see you see you again at some point very soon i'm sure thank you very much thank you